Hey ladies, how's it going? Dan Frampton here, and today you are expecting me to be making fun of a record, because in yesterday's video I was like, I'm going to be making fun of a record tomorrow because there's something I don't like, but something else happened that I need to talk about more. And I have it all pulled up here, it's a bit of a spoiler, but as you can see we got some state champs photographs going here on the old Google image search, and, but that's not happening today. Today we're talking about Harley Flanagan. And yeah, I know we've memed on him in the past, and I kind of poked fun at him for being a bit of a boomer, but that was pretty innocent little ribbing, okay? And I didn't really mean much of it, and it was all just there for fun. And I think he saw the video, because like right after, he made this post being like, if people are still talking about you, it means you're still relevant. And I just want to let you know right now, Harley Flanagan, I think that you're a pretty sick guy, and I do follow your Instagram account, and I like all the pictures, unironically, I think that you're a really chill dude. I especially love love your coffee posts, and I like that you enjoy the gourmet shit. I just wish I could do that thing with my face that you do with your face, Harley Flanagan. But I'm not here to talk about your amazing coffee posts. I'm gonna pull one up here really quick, because they are fucking sick. I like that gourmet shit. Hell yeah. Man, I get an insane amount of enjoyment out of those coffee posts in an unironic way. And I'm not like here to use you as like some sort of lol cow. You know, I think that these are amazing coffee posts. I'm a coffee person, I'm a punk rock person, and seeing these two things come together in the most wholesome way imaginable just makes my heart smile, you know? But I'm not here to talk about my smile and heart, not in any way, shape, or form. I'm here to talk about this text post that he put up. Now apparently the Cro-Mags, his band, is not getting paid for their huge record, Age of Coral. This record is known to inspire a whole bunch of musicians. And not only musicians, slammers. People go crazy for the Cro-Mags. They're still talked about to this day for all of their controversies, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Well, I guess we are here to talk about that a little bit, because there wouldn't be this without a bit of controversy breadcrumbs that kind of laid path for this. But Anyway, I'm just going to read this word for word. I might stop and fucking, you know, comment here and there. And then I'm going to tell you what I think about this whole thing. Age of Quarrel re-release 2022. We have learned that Profile is re-releasing Cro-Mags Age of Quarrel. As everyone knows, they tested the waters last year with a record store day limited release for which we asked them for an accounting. They refused, directed us to our contract, which we do not have, and basically said, sue us if you want to see it. Let's back up. The cro signed with Profile through their imprint Rock Hotel via Chris Williamson in 1986. Each member was between 18 and 25 years old. For counsel, they were given Chris Williamson's Rock Hotel attorney and were not given any copies of the contract. That's where this started. Yeah, of course. Like, as soon as I hear money dispute, I'm like, how old were they when they fucking got popular? Because record labels take advantage of young guys because they know that the young guys don't have the experience to know that the money is in the publishing. The money is in the licensing of these songs. And there's a bit of songwriting royalty that can be thrown around here or there, but the players on the record, you know, they're not given a lot in terms of ownership of that music, especially when there's a label involved. Okay, let's jump back in here. After going back and forth with Profile, last year, we were plainly told, if you want to see your contract, you will have to sue us. Literally, we don't produce contracts unless in litigation. I was like, okay, well, show us what we signed then. And you're like, no, we're not going to show you what you signed until you sue us. That means open up your wallet, spend money on a fucking lawyer that I know you don't have money because you're a fucking New York punk. New York punks don't have money. Have you seen his coffee posts? He likes the gourmet shit. And I wouldn't fuck with Harley Flanagan. I may meme on him from time to time, you know, but he's a very wholesome man. He likes a cold shower. He's a family man. You know, he wakes up and he takes the train. He goes and does his fucking martial arts and he drinks his gourmet coffee. He is an amazing dude. And I did make fun of him for just using the main page to show fans wearing his merch. And that's like low hanging fruit. You know what I mean? That's like not a big deal. And he could keep that up for eternity, but he doesn't. He's like a certified personality on the internet. 
and I think he's fucking sick, okay? I said it. Let's jump back into this thing. We're about halfway through. Our goal is now, and has been, to have the players paid for their work on this record. That is it. Nobody has ever been paid, except perhaps Chris Williamson, and nobody has ever received an accounting for this record, or for best wishes. There is no doubt there are terms in the contract so egregious that a court would throw them out. There is no doubt those egregious terms go on in perpetuity, as was common in those days. The point of this statement is so basic. The facts are very simple. People seem to like the album. The musicians who made the album should be compensated for their work. They have not been compensated and are not currently being compensated and from this new release they will not be compensated. I have gone out of my way to make sure everybody that played on the recent and upcoming live Chromegs releases from Back on Black Records will be compensated. And this has always been part of my goal. I can't speak for everyone else but I will continue to do the right thing and try to resolve this. And you know, I haven't heard the word publishing, royalties, or any of that stuff. He's like, no, 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 I'm not talking about any of those fancy fucking business words. That's not what this is about. People made a record, okay? People like the record. People are still buying that record, and the people that made that record are just like not getting paid for it, and that kind of sucks. And I agree with that. I don't want to talk about the record labels. I don't want to talk about licensing. I don't want to talk about royalties. That's bullshit. Pay Harley! I have always been willing to sit down with all former members of the band to try to make everybody walk away feeling better about all this. And I'm still willing to do so. I am a fan of music, and I understand why people want to buy the 2022 re-release of Age of Coral and why record stores want to carry it. Because it's a cool record that means a lot to a lot of people. And in a lot of ways, I don't blame anyone for this. But I think it is important that you know that the musicians who played on and wrote this album will see nothing from its sale unless the label resolves it with us. Several stores and outlets have chosen not to carry this re-release for the above Stated reasons. Harley Flanagan, Chrome Eggs. So what do I think about all this? Well, I think record labels are evil. That's not news, you know, and if they don't want to fucking show you something, they can just be like, nah, 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 we're not paying you. And hey, if you want to see some paperwork, you're going to have to pay up first, buddy, and you're going to see it in litigation. You know, that's kind of like such bullshit. And to be honest, they probably did sign a record label that says they have no right to anything because they were taken advantage of by these fucking idiots back in the day. And they were just thinking, what do you mean? We're gonna get our record distributed? That's crazy, signing on the dotted line, not knowing they were selling their souls to corporate devils. But I'm no legal expert, you know? And just like Harley, as it says here, I'm a music fan. I like these musicians that made these records, you know? And I hate to think that someone that has inspired so so much positivity in the scene, so much unity, and so much growth through the passion of this style of music is not getting paid for it. It just breaks my heart. And it's like one of the most demotivating things in the whole world. It's like, why do I deserve anything in life when fucking the Cro-Mags aren't making any money from Age of Coral? Like, it doesn't make sense in my brain. But, you know, whatever, that's the fucking reality we live in, I guess. So with all that in mind, you still want to support these guys, you still want to support this specific guy. You you can go over to his Instagram and you can check out, you know, their limited edition merch and you can still throw some dollars at this guy knowing that his music is being exploited by evil pieces of shit. And you better believe it, the next time I have $60 in my bank account, I'm buying this hoodie. So as you guys know, I like punk and hardcore, I like coffee, I like these posts, I also like drum Instagram of people doing drum covers or whatever, and we also got Harley showing his drum skills. Now, Admittedly, he's not the best drummer in the world yet, but that's still a sick beat he was holding down and a really fucking amazing post. Go follow this guy, dude. He's fucking unbelievable. And all that stuff I criticized him about isn't even that prevalent anymore. Sure, he's still showing off some of his fans, but it's not anything I should actually fucking bust his balls over, you know? Dude's a legend. Dude has an amazing face, amazing tattoos, amazing presence, so much charisma. And I can't, I really can't say enough good things about him. So I'm so sorry if like you guys thought that I hated this man or whatever, or if he specifically thought I hated him because I just made a YouTube video roasting him for a little bit. But that should tell you, just because I like you, that doesn't mean you're safe. If you're doing something cringe, I will be roasting you. Okay, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, slap like, subscribe, hit the bell. If you've done that already, consider joining the channel. Until my next upload, watch another upload.